go ahead and, and view application. Okay, view application. So we're going to go in there and we're going to, ah, here's what happens. What it does is it looks at, in my case, and what it does is this builder mode allows you to move points around and it allows you to build these things. Now, one of the things that I wanted to point out is that let's say we um, were in a, in a situation where these photos were not geotagged. In my case, I took the photos with my phone. And so they ended up being, I was very pleased, by the way, at the, the placement of these things. They ended up being, and you can see from, from this particular one uh, in particular, I was right over uh, a freeway, this number 23. See that? I took it right when we were crossing over uh, the 6th Avenue freeway in, in Lakewood looking toward the mountains. And I'm very pleased with the, the accuracy, especially since I was inside a moving light rail uh, train. And so, you know, I was inside. Sure, there were big windows. But by and large, I'm very pleased with the, the accuracy, the spatial accuracy. Now, how does it know where to place these photos? Well, what it does when you first go into this builder mode, and we're running out of time, and I kind of sped ahead to this final product, uh, as you can see. But what it does is it says, where are your photos located? Are they on your computer? Are they on the web already? In my case, I said, hey, my photos are on my Picasso web account, right? That's where they're sitting. And it said, OK, look up the username. And I put in you know, my Picasso web um, email address. And then I, I indicated the folder. And this is why it's important to put all these in a folder. You don't want to be spanning multiple folders and having this sort of scattered around your different uh, you know, photo bucket and your Flickr and et cetera. It really all needs to be in one, fo uh, one folder for a particular story map. Then I can just go to that folder, and it says, oh, you've got 30 photos in there, Joseph. I know how to geotag all those, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now, another thing that I wanted to point out here is that if you've got a GPX file from a GPS device or from your phone, from an app on your phone like RunKeeper, any fitness app, or MotionX GPS, or MyTrack, then you can get this track, right? Just like I've got digitized, but you can actually upload that with a GPX file. And then another thing that I had a note to self to, me to uh, mention to you all is that I do have uh, over here, let me, let me skip around here. I can, of course, now I've got this edit me. So I can add captions on all these things, right? Now, one of the things that I wanted to point out is that, see this right here? This isn't a photo, obviously. This is a video. Ooh, how did I get that video in there? Very cool. Well, I got that video in there. Um, from a blog post that I wrote about in, in October. In that blog post, I talk about how do you get videos inside these story maps. Let me show you um, inside here. See this video uh, button? There's just a little bit of tinkering you need to do. One thing you need to do is, is put a pound sign at the end of your video and say, is video. Okay. That makes it embedded so that it's inside. Well, there's actually one of two things going on. That's one of the two things it needs. The other thing that it needs is it needs to have the embed code from YouTube or Vimeo in there. YouTube seems to work really well right now, so Vimeo tends to be a little bit higher resolution than a lot of those, and so uh, your results may vary. But, but uh, give it a try. It's a really quite nice. So what I did on that particular one is, right, I went to uh, my video channel, and I went to this west rail line, right? Here's that video that you just saw. And if you go down to share, I hope this is not going too fast. You can flag me if I'm skipping pages too fast. But inside here, I don't want to share a, pl a playlist. I'm going to uncheck that. But I'm going to go to the embed. And see this embed code in here? You probably played with this in other contexts. But this part here is what I'm taking out, the part that I've got highlighted. After the C, that's the last highlight, I put the pound is video in my story map. Okay, And that's how it ended up being in there. So 
anyway, something else to think about and play with. I think you might like that, uh, that functionality. So OK, well, let's just sum up here what, um, what we did. And then we'll go to the last uh, few bits that I was going to go over with you all about. So all right, so that was method one, right? It was We started with a ArcGIS online map. Actually, first I, I put my photos out on uh, Google+, Plus, didn't I? And I put them in a folder, and I made them shared. And I made sure that uh, um, it was publicly access accessible. I also did the same thing with my video, right? I put my video up on YouTube. Then I started with an existing map in my case. I started with a map that I already had the West Rail line. If you didn't have that line, if you wanted to put something in, you could put a GPX file like we talked about in your ArcGIS online map. Or you could just start with a new map. Then I shared and published a web application. In my case, I made it with the Story Maps web application. And when I did that, it said, oh, Joseph, where are your photos? And I said, well, my photos are on Picasa Web. And here's my uh, login uh, credentials. And here's my folder inside, inside there. And it automatically geotagged them because they were already geotagged from my phone. Now, if I didn't like the position of some of those, I definitely have the option, as you saw there, with the builder mode to manually adjust every one of those points. And then you can add things like the information on each photo. 